Hello D&D people of the internet, it's me, Max from Maximus Miniature, with another video to satiate your never-ending hunger for D&D content. Today's video we will be discussing the turtle. Throughout the video, I will be going over what a turtle is, why they exist, and what their purpose is, what the turtle's life is like, what their stats are, and ultimately what, in my opinion, makes them one of the most versatile and amazing races in the game. Now. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of this episode, I want to give a quick shout out to those of you who showed all the support to that last video I made. Holy cow, 27 subscribers, people. I mean, most YouTubers can do that in the blink of their eye, but we got 27 in only a couple days. You 27 out there, thank you so much. You made my day. Those of you who liked and commented, anyone who shared, you made my day too. So, if you want to be a cool person, and I, I don't know, yeah, a cool person, then uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. So, with that out of the way, let's get into the actual content. First off, I want to give a quick disclaimer. Portals are my favorite race, so I'm going to be a little biased. That's just a fair warning. I, I'm going to have some biases. So, with the disclaimer out of the way, Let's get on into the video. So first off, you may be asking, what is a turtle? Well, if the name and thumbnail didn't give it away immediately, a turtle is a turtle person. Pretty much, you take a Galapagos tortoise, you make it bigger, you stand it on its hind legs, you give it fingers and the ability to think, and you got a turtle. That's it. Now, if we go into their history, turtles actually have a kind of interesting history, I guess. Pretty much, turtles have no canonical reason for existing. They don't have a pantheon, they don't have gods they worship. Though some turtles are known to become clerics and druids that worship other gods and other pantheons. But they themselves have no gods who created them, unlike dwarves and elves and goblins. They, they're just... Turtles, they exist because they exist. And, I mean, that's interesting in its own right, because almost every single race has a reason for existing. But turtles just get to hang out. They are turtle men, and, and women, and they just do turtle stuff. My theory is, though, let's just hypothetically say some really powerful wizard showed up and decided to take all the tortoises and awaken all of them, and just tell them, okay, you guys have fun now, bye. Who would that powerful wizard be? Oh, I don't know, how about the immortal one that's chilling next to the turtle homeland? A Sararak? Oh, and I should probably now explain where turtles live. Turtles live on an island known as the Snout of Omgar. The Snout of Omgar is somewhat mentioned in the Tomb of Annihilation module, though it is, it's given much more detail in flesh in the promptly named Turtle Package. I would recommend purchasing it. It comes with a couple new cool monsters, the Turtle Race itself, and some information on how to run a quick adventure in the Snout of Omgar. Pretty much, the Snout of Omgar has been Turtle's home forever. As long as people know, known had, had known Turtles existed, they've lived on the Snout of Omgar. It used to be a peninsula connected to the continent of Cholt. But, during the Spell Plague, they got disconnected, and the Turtles just decided, you know what, we're going to stay here. And that's the history that we have with the Turtles. That's it. They live on an island, they do turtle things, and we have no idea how they were created. They just exist. Moving on now to, what is the Turtles' life like? So, as we all know, most races in D&D have some sort of path that they follow. Elves are born, and they live, and about 100 years into their life, they lose the ability to dream about their past reincarnations, and they get depressed, and they want to go on an adventure so they can get lots of experiences to have as good memories for their next life to think about. Turtles are similar. They get their lifetime panned out. So, let's go over it. 
Turtles are born with about 8 to 12 other siblings inside a mud or sand fortress that their parents build. They then spend the first year of their life living with their parents while their parents teach them how to survive in the jungle, how to live in the jungle, what sorts of animals, funguses, plants to eat, how to use a spear, how to use traps, so on and so forth, all sorts of jungle survival techniques. And then their parents drop dead after one year, and the turtles have to pick up their spears, run off into the woods, and do their own thing. That's it. That's how a turtle's life starts, which is kind of a sick backstory, if you ask me. I mean, most people can say, oh, my family was murdered by an ancient demon lord. I seek revenge. Turtles can just say, oh yeah, my parents died while I was one. Turtles are sick. I mean, holy cow. But then what does a turtle do after that? Well, they live mostly as hermits. You know, by themselves, build a grass hut, make a garden, go hunting every day. You know, fishing, just do turtle stuff. Periodically they'll form a small tribe, mostly with their fellow siblings and a couple other friends that they meet on the island. But besides that, they're mostly loners. Now, most turtles do decide to just spend their lives alone, or in a small tribe, on the island of Omnar. And they just sit there. And they do turtle things. Every single day. Day in and day out. Go fishing, go gardening, build another shack for fun, and that's it. But periodically, you get a turtle who decides, You know what? I want to go see the world. And that's why turtles are famous for being some of the biggest tourists in all of the Forgotten Realms. Turtles sail to the mainlands, go and see as many things as they can in the span of 20 to 30 years, sometimes even 40, depending on how early they leave the island. They go on adventure. Most turtle adventures are sightseers and tourists. And then, eventually, they decide, okay, time to go back to Omgar. And they peace out of whatever they were doing, go back to Omgar, find someone to mate with, build a shack, lay a couple eggs, then spend the last year of their life teaching their children how to survive in a jungle. And such the process continues. Simple and short, that's the life of a turtle. Just about 50 years, they're born, they're raised, their parents die, they go adventuring for a while, and then they do exactly what their parents did, have a couple kids and then die after training them. Yeah, turtles have a sick backstory. Now, moving on to what statistically makes a turtle really good and why would you want to play one? Okay, well now you're thinking, okay, the backstory is cool and all. But what about their stats? What makes me want to play a turtle? Well, first off, a turtle gets a plus two to strength and a plus one to con wisdom, not constitution. This immediately sticks you in the role of easily being a tanky druid, a tanky cleric, a strength-based um, ranger, along with a fighter or maybe even a barbarian. All pretty good options with a lot of versatility. And then there's even more versatility if you're using Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which allows you to have to talk with your DM and change up your ability score improvements. Let's say you want to play a wizard instead and be a turtle wizard. Well, you can switch those into constitution and intelligence to give you a buff in your most needed stats. After stat increases, you get your age, which we've already gone over. But there's one key detail. While a turtle is trained for one year, they don't technically age until they reach 15. So they're not technically an adult until they live for 15 years. And then, yes, they die about 50. Sad to say, but they're short-lived. Next is alignment. Turtles often tend to lawful and good alignments. Lawful because most turtles lead an orderly and ritualistic life where they get up in the morning, hunt, fish, swim, and do normal turtle things, and then they go to sleep. Rinse and repeat. That's what a turtle does. They often tend towards good alignments because, well, turtles are chill with people hanging out on their islands. As long as you're not going to go chop down their trees, kill their animals, and be a total rude person, for lack of a better word. 
Though, sadly, some Tauros are often tempted towards chaos and evil, usually through greed and lust for power, noticing how short their lifespans are compared to most other creatures. Sadly, some Tauros may fall down this path. Moving on to your size, you stand usually between 5 and 6 feet tall. I personally once played a turtle who stood seven and a half feet tall, and that was his reason for leaving his island, because people kept making fun of him for it. Yeah, it was a bit of a goofy backstory. Also, you weigh about 450 pounds, a third of that being your shell. Yeah, your shell is heavy. You have to imagine you are a turtle person, you're going to have a big, heavy shell. Next up you have your main abilities that really set you aside from any other race. First off, you can hold your breath underwater. You can hold your breath for one hour. You aren't technically a swimming race, but I mean, you can, you, you can hold your breath, so that's, that's cool. That's cool and all if you're running a nautical campaign or just need to go retrieve something from the ocean's depths. You can hold your breath for an hour without suffocating. Cool off the bat. Next up, you got an unarmed strike. If you're playing a monk, this could be useful if you want to switch out for some slashing damage because you get to deal 1d4 slashing damage plus your strength mod. And it also is a nice replacement if for some reason you get detached from your weapons and you don't currently have them. Next up becomes the main piece that would attract you to being the turtle, the armor class. You have a natural armor of a 17. No bonuses are added, but a 17. That's one point less than plate mail. And you want to know the best part? Plate mail impose and dis imposes disadvantage when attempting to be stealthy. Turtle shell doesn't. You just walk around with almost plate mail level armor and no stealth debuff. That is just plain bonkers. Oh, and then you can also retract into your shell as an action, and then come back out as a bonus action. During this time inside your shell, your AC increases by 4. <laughs> you get advantage on strength and constitution saving throws. Sadly, though, your speed gets reduced to zero. You can't increase the speed in any way whatsoever. And you have disadvantage on stealth. Along with you can't take reactions, and the only action you can take is a bonus action to emerge. So you do have some limitations with the second ability. But overall, the 17 armor class is bonkers. There's one downside, though. You can't wear actual armor. Though, I mean, if you talk with your DM to buy barring which is armor that's designed for mounts, technically you're closer to a mount than a humanoid, so you might be able to talk with your DM and see if that can be done. That is not technically a game rule, so if don't go to Adventures League with that. And finally, of course, you do get proficiency and survival skill, and as I mentioned, if you're playing Tasha's Cauldron of Everything rules, then you can switch that out for another skill that's more useful. But that's the stats of a turtle. With the armor class, you can do some crazy stuff. People always talk about the mountain dwarf because you can go wear armor and you can be a wizard with armor. Really powerful, crazy cool. No, no, stop. Play a turtle. You don't get disadvantage. You have one of the best armors in the game. And yeah, yeah, it's already bonkers. I can see the only upside of the dwarf being that you get a plus in con, which is more useful than a strength and wisdom plus for a wizard, if you're just using the normal rules and not Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. But if you're using Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, it's just better to play the turtle. So, turtle sorcerer, you are the last person in the party. I finally get to destroy you. You're finally going to be dead. I'm so happy. I mean, wow, your armor class has been annoying me for this entire game. Dude, you shouldn't be rage jamming. It causes metagaming and ultimately takes away the fun from everyone. 
I don't care at this point. I just want you dead. Fine then, fine. Let's see how that goes for you. I proceed to quicken spell time stop and surround the Demogorgon with glyphs of warding, each loaded with a radiant beam at 7th level. Hmm? Hmm? Where is your precious Demogorgon now? Oh, and then with my main action, I proceed to pop into my shell. Yeah? Mm-hmm? Mm-hmm? Oh, and if you didn't forget, I have that improved ring of invulnerability I took off the paladin's dead corpse, bringing my AC to a total of 24. Checkmate, Dungeon Master. You know I hate you, right? So, that has been my guide to the race of Turtle, the turtle people of Dungeons and Dragons, and in my opinion, the greatest race in the game. So yeah, quick apologies, um, I meant to upload this yesterday, but I had to take some time to research copyright because it turns out that a lot of the images I've been using for my thumbnails are copyrighted. So I gotta go change all my thumbnails. And secondly, math homework. Yeah. And also, sorry, there's background noise in the earlier recording. I realized that after the fact, so yeah, that was a fan. My bad. I'll work to make more higher quality content in the future. So, if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to see this channel prosper, then leave a comment and share with a couple friends. Tell me what your favorite race is, and tell me what you'd like to see in the future of this channel. Till next time, this has been Max from Maximus Miniature. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.